Okay, so where did you live during the war? Well, the war began for us in 1941, and I was in high school. Then uh, it went on through the three years that I was in college, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, so what was life like at home during the war? Well, it was a little tight. We had uh, rationing, and we had limits of, of some things, gasoline, for instance, and uh, if you had a, a business that you had to travel in, you could get what they called a C card. Uh, an A card was just for people that didn't use their cars in their business, and uh, that kept us at home a right good bit. And uh, we, uh, my mother and I went to the Red Cross and uh, sold for, for things to send overseas. And we also rolled bandages to, to be used for the wounded, you know. And uh, otherwise it was not not too bad on us. Okay, so what difficulties did you face during the uh, war, when you are at home? Well, we had uh, rationing, as I said. We had sugar rationed, and meat was rationed. I don't think any of the foods were rationed, but uh, sometimes it was hard to get things because the troops that were going off to fight had to have provisions, and they, we certainly wanted them to have whatever they needed. One of the main things, I think, about the war was that, uh, that World War II, that is, everybody in the country, just about, supported it and was eager to help the soldiers and to do what we could. The one thing I thought was kind of funny was they asked us to open cans at both ends, stick the ends inside, and stomp the cans. That was so that they wouldn't take up as much room hauling because they had to transport a lot of stuff and people to the seacoast, one or the other. And uh, so they didn't, didn't want us to take up any more space than necessary. One of the things I remembered a slogan from the war. It said, Uncle Sam says, pack it flat. They were talking about toilet tissue, and they wanted you to smash it down to uh, ship it so it wouldn't take up as much room. The most interesting thing that I've learned since then was that uh, and when troop trains would go across the country to be shipped out to uh, Europe or maybe the other way to Japan, uh, there was a, a, probably there was more than one community, but there was one that no matter what time of uh, day or night, the uh, troop trains were coming through. They would make a rest stop in their town, which was a small town, I think. Uh, and these people would somehow find out if anybody on the train had a birthday. They would have a birthday cake made. They would bring all this other food in the middle of the night, maybe, to feed 
the troops. I mean, there was that kind of support and the kind of thing we haven't seen in recent wars. It was, I think it was interesting, and uh, I don't know, it was uh, kind of, uh, I, I think you were proud, for example, of your country, and you wanted to help, because who knew that they'd be over here maybe bombing us before it was over. And I found out after the war that uh, there had been uh, German submarines that were cruising along the Atlantic coast. And I didn't realize they got that close. I knew when the troop trains, and at the time my husband-to-be was on uh, one of the trains, I think they did over the uh, Queen Mary, the big ship, luxury ship, to put a jillion men on there, and they couldn't go straight across the Atlantic because the U-boats were after them, so they zigged and zagged and took forever, you know, to get over there. But uh, I, I think that was one of the interesting things uh, the fact that everybody was behind it. And in a community, if there was somebody who had tried to get out, out of being drafted, they were looked down on by the community. They just, nobody had any respect for them. And I, I think that's really not the way it's been in the last several wars, it was everybody pulled together. We had not only gasoline ration, but they took all the factories that made cars and had them making tanks and all the things for war. And when the, when the war was over, it took a time to get them back into form to make cars. And uh, I know that year-old cars were at a premium. Now, the government had set price uh, limits on a lot of things, and there, were, there was a limit on these year-old cars because that's what everybody wanted. It was the newest thing you could get. And I remember he helped me buy a car, and he went to a friend that he knew well that had a, an automobile agency. And my father was a minister, so I think this friend knew better than to charge him the great price that people were getting for those cars. But, uh, you know, it, it was tight in a lot of ways.